there they go. Second leg of the late pick four at Belmont Park on Saturday, May 14th. Race nine is the grade three Peter Pan Stakes. This is a one-turn, nine-furlong dirt test for three-year-olds. This is the local prep for the grade one Belmont Stakes going a mile and a half here on June 11th. It's incredible to me, Mike, that nine furlongs at Belmont, they're like, yeah, it's just one turn. <laughs> that's, that's almost three turns at some other tracks here. Uh, your favoritism is going to be on the four horse, we the people at three to one, but then you see the rail horse set sail seven to two. Impressive maiden winner for Mandela. Electability for Chad Brown is looking good in two starts so far this year. This year. He's seven to two. This was the nastiest race on the card. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean that I looked at this and I could have seen 18 different outcomes. I have no idea which one is going to be. What do you What do you think happens here? Well, look, mile and eight, three year olds, especially at Belmont. I want the horse that's in the lead. We've seen a lot of California horses do well on dirt on the East Coast, specifically at Keeneland and at Churchill Downs. I expect to kind of see that trend continue here. I think Set Sail is the fastest horse from the rail. I think Set Sail really only has one choice, and that's to go. The race, the first race that Set Sail was in when, when uh, he went off as a dollar and eighty cent favorite, you had the winner and the second place horses come back to win. Horses training well. I think this is an aggressive move by Mandela to bring him out here, and Rosario finds it fit to pick up the mount. I, I'm going to take the inside horse, the one Set Sail on top. I think he's going to wire this field if he's able to get out there. And really, the only horses can challenge him on the lead is the two, and. Like, if you look at those races at Aqueduct, they're it, not good. Like, they're, they're bad races. And so I, I would much rather take the inside horse set sail here to try and just do exactly that, set sail, and, and wire this field. Well, if you remember um, uh, long term, the horse did electability just barely beat by a half length to get break his maiden. Uh, long term went from that race straight into the Wood Memorial. That was one of the two maidens that Todd Pletcher threw in. And long term, up until the Wood Memorial, had finished second in every single race. So you barely beat a horse that just loves to run second. Uh, and then after that, that, that same one turn mile aqueduct setup. I mean, the, the buyer is nice, but visually, Mike, I watched both of these and Maybe the horse has fight, or maybe he's not that good, and he was just that much better than the horses he was fighting. So I think we're both against the two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot against the one here. I think that this is a big step up for Mandela, and he said that he sent him out here because there were no other options in California. And if you think about it, really, until the shared belief at Del Mar, which I think mid to late July... There's nothing for three-year-olds stakes-wise on Dirt in California. So he sent him out here, and yeah, that was a nice maiden win. But that race on debut, uh, actually, the, the top four finishers from that race all won next out. Not just the top three, but the top four. Problem is, two of those, the second place and the fourth place finishers, they both had to be in from claiming tags to be able to do it. So yeah, it looks good on paper. We're like, yeah, they all you know came out of that to win, but two of them had to go down the claiming ranks to do it. I don't love that about uh, those horses. By the way, American Admiral is the Bob Baffert horse that was outworking Taba that had everybody all up in arms that when the jockey on Ad American Admiral, you remember this, was looking back like, are you going to hurry up with, with Taba already? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's who that horse is. Um, I'm against well, it, but again, you, you mentioned could be the fastest horse, and with Rosario picking it up, that is a key move. And, and you mentioned American Admiral won a maiden claimer. Uh, I mean, let's put an asterisk by 150,000 by maiden claimers, okay? I like wonder if you're going to look at that. <laughs> that's not quite a full-on maiden claimer. It's not like we dropped down for 32K or anything. So uh, that's still a pretty good win. And, you know, I mean, Tabor ran sixth in the Derby. We're 12th in the Derby, right? So Set Sail could run better than that. <laughs> um, I know that uh, Michael Myers is in the chat. He's excited about Set Sail. He and Dan, both, uh, they're a fantasy league team. They picked up Set Sail and Electability. So... The rooting for those horses to go one, two in a dead heat or maybe get a dead heat and then go off to the Belmont Stakes, uh, which is, I mentioned, is the prep for this. My top pick is the favorite three to one. We the people. But I think that this horse has just got the great tactical speed that Flavian Pratt can just handle so well. And the Arkansas Derby, when he was a second choice, he didn't have a shot. We talked about that in the race. Man, that we the people would be fun to bet in the Arkansas Derby if he wasn't drawn the parking lot. But it also could have been a little bit too much too soon for him that those first two starts were impressive. Oakland Park horses have been kind of hit and miss leaving, but some of them did okay at Churchill. So I think, all right, there are some some Oakland horses that can leave and do well. And again, that front running or pressing style that he has, if Set Sail goes off, he can sit behind him within a length or two. And if Set Sail doesn't have the ability to go a full, you know, nine furlongs, maybe the step up first time versus winners is too much for him. I think We the People is going to sit right there. But did you use him? 
I did. We the People is my other must use horse. I mean, I think these two make a ton of sense. Uh, we the People, obviously, coming out of probably the most difficult race in this uh, out of this field, and so I, you got to give him some credit there. You mentioned the post draw; it was absolutely brutal for him, especially since the horse wanted to be forwardly placed. And when you look at the comments on the race too, Washi five wide at the seven eighths empty. I mean, that's never something you want to see when a horse is washed out like that. Usually, they're going to run poorly. You combine that with the post; uh, it just not surprised by the effort from we the people i want to see him in the post parade to see if i'm like interested in betting this horse to win and the reason i don't have him on top is that issue like not great when you're washed out in a race especially that big one so we'll see how he handles this uh, but i would expect that he's going to look pretty good here for sets obviously pretty good to get, get his horse going so i'm gonna go with the one and the four and the five dollar ticket uh to me they're the two most logical horses in here i think they, they really make the most sense uh, the third horse you used, we agreed on, so I'll talk about my other one real quick, and then we'll come back to him. Uh, my second up was the five, Golden Glider. Don't love the price. I was hoping for a little bit better on him, but it was a horse that Mark Cassie's always thought pretty highly of. That second start at Tampa Bay Downs, if you remember, was supposed to be against Emmanuel, and at that point, everybody was on the Emmanuel hype train, and oh my god, he's going to do the Pletcher thing where he goes to Tampa, wins this allowance race, then goes off, and... Cassie knew that as well as anybody did and still entered Golden Glider. Emmanuel ends up scratching. Glider wins for fun. He was the only horse in the Tampa Bay Derby who actually gained any ground on Classic Causeway. You remember that horse was kind of running away uh, gate to wire. Uh, didn't come out of that race to run that well, but the Bluegrass Stakes, I'm going to forgive him. I thought he actually ran sneakily well. Ricardo pushed him pretty hard to go to the lead out of the gate, and I felt like the plan was to just chase Emmanuel, who set the pace, and then the two of them end up fading behind Zandon, who ends up getting a really nice third in the Kentucky Derby, almost wins it. Smile Happy uh, was top seven or top eight in the Kentucky Derby. He went, uh, ran well. So the fact that this horse was only a half length behind Emmanuel in the bluegrass and we're not seeing Zandon or Smile Happy, I'm going to use him. But again, the price, I could understand if you're using the seven to two set sale and we the people, you probably don't want a four to one as well. Yeah, I also just I don't like that Florida form. I think that, that there's going to be horses that are going to be able to be better than a horse that ran at Tampa in those three races. Yes, mm -hmm. the bluegrass looks pretty good on paper, but uh, I mean, I just I, I I don't love the race from there was no real reason why he should back up. Um, I, and they didn't go very fast up front. They went 48, 112 and three and they got destroyed by Zanon and Smile Happy. It wasn't like they were close. They were they were way back there, and no one was really running on outside of those two. So I, I don't really give that race that much of a credit. I am going to use the six Western River. You mentioned it's the other percent in here, and it's, it, to me it's a logical horse if you're looking for any type of a price. I think you're getting a huge rider upgrade going from Santana to Saez, so I love that. Um, it, the last two races off of the layoff were both significantly better than what we saw from this horse in the two-year-old season. We've seen Tappets develop slowly. This is one where the third off the layoff, you can see a big-time effort. And, and if Brissett thinks that this horse should be in there, and he knows that We the People is probably the best, most talented horse in this spot, if he decides to have the six in here as well, it tells you what he thinks about Western River. So I'm going to go one, four, six in the 50-cent ticket and hopefully add a little bit of value with that six-to-one shot. Yeah, Luis Saez picking up the mount I thought was a big upgrade as well. And uh, you didn't mention it, but he has a famous older brother, full brother to creator, the 2016 Belmont Stakes winner. That's the Six Western River. So um, a, a similar lines too, where they tried turf earlier in their careers. They broke their maidens at Oakland Park as three-year-olds going two turns. So some similarities there. Creator was a little bit farther along. Uh, he ended up going to the Kentucky Derby after winning the Arkansas Derby, but Timing wise, it's going to kind of work out similarly. Western River, just not as much experience. But um, yeah, I, I went back and forth on him. When I saw the price, Mike, I said six to one, that's good enough. I'll throw him on. He's not on my press ticket. I'm just going to go four or five for that. But uh, uh, definitely my 50 center. I'm going to be on him here. Uh, were there any horses here that we didn't talk about that you wanted to touch on quick? I mean, I think this is an interesting field overall. I mean, if you're looking for a price like, like the six horse all the way on the outside, state planning would need to take a monster step forward. But we've seen Juan Vasquez do some crazy stuff in races like this. I wouldn't be shocked if that horse runs well and gets a piece underneath. Um, you know, it, it's just it's a pretty good race. I mean, I'm surprised complete agendas in here, to be honest. I mean, that was the one where I kind of looked at it. I'm like, eh. Not not overly in love with that, but it's a curling horse that sold for two hundred fifty thousand for Napoleon Saint Elias. Saint Elias. So I'm, I'm not surprised that they they end up putting it in here, but I, I think that Complete Agenda might take some money as a horse that you can kind of leave out. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting horse, and, and watch for maybe some later progression later in the year when they get to Saratoga. Maybe maybe the curling stakes. It feels like Complete Agenda could possibly go there, and uh, it's restricted stakes for non stakes winners to compete against each other. So maybe the race named for his sire would be a good spot for him. Uh, but we definitely like We the People and Western River here. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. 
Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first. 